this episode, we're gonna be talking about how to use Stripe Checkout in your Rails application to handle one-time and subscription payments in your Rails app. And you don't even really have to build anything because all of the payments functionality is done on Stripe. So this is really, really handy. We redirect from our Rails app to Stripe. All of the payments are handled there and then they redirect the user back to your application if they cancel or if they finish successfully. And all you have to do is listen to webhooks for when those charges succeed. So let's take a look at um, the Stripe checkout example here. If we pull this up, what we'll see is we will redirect to a page that looks just like this with our product on the left side that the user is purchasing and some information on the right side. So we can enable Google Pay, Apple Pay um, payments with cards and it will collect all that information, set up the Stripe elements and handle all of that automatically for us and we don't have to build any of that. So this is a great quick way to add payments to your Rails application and that's what we're gonna do today. So I have built um, the PayGem, which handles all the payments for Jumpstart Pro and a bunch of other applications. And I've also added Stripe checkout functionality to pay recently. So we're gonna be adding this to our application and using this for Stripe checkout. So first things first, we're gonna install the PayGem and the Stripe Gem, make sure that those are um, ready to go and running. Um, and Pay is going to see that Stripe is installed and enable the Stripe functionality. And we're going to run the migrations for those. So first is the migrations for Pay, which is going to keep track of the charges and subscriptions. And then our Pay user um, generator here is going to add a migration for a column for Pay data on the user. So it's gonna keep track of the Stripe customer ID and things like that on the user model. And then we can run Rails DB migrate to uh, create those um, database columns and tables and we'll be all good to go. Now I've got a Rails application that already has that done and um, I've got it running here. But uh, before we get into that, I wanna run Rails credentials edit development or environment equals development. And we're going to open up our Rails credentials so that we can add our Stripe API keys there in a way that, um, that Pay will find them. So inside of here, Pay is going to look for a key of Stripe and then it's gonna look for public key, private key, and the signing secret. Um, and so this is your public key from Stripe, this is your secret key on Stripe, you paste those in, and your signing secret is for verifying webhooks. Now in development, um, we have the Stripe CLI command that we can use. You're gonna need to install this, of course. But if we run this, it's going to listen for webhooks and then forward them to our localhost 3000 and then pay when it is installed, will mount automatically to slash pay slash webhooks slash Stripe to connect and listen to the Stripe webhooks and if you run this command in development, it's gonna spit out a webhook signing secret, which you can copy and paste into your development signing secret line. That's gonna allow it to verify that those um, API or the webhooks actually came from the Stripe API and uh, verifies those and make sure that they're secure. You're gonna have different keys for all of these in staging and production and whatever. So go ahead and fill out those Rails credentials. I'll do that off screen and I'll talk to you in a second. All right, so now that that is installed, we can open up our editor and start setting up our code. So first things first, let's go to the head tag and make sure that we have the Stripe JavaScript included here. I've already added this, um, but just add the script source HTTPS js.stripe.com slash v3 and that's gonna make sure that the Stripe JavaScript is available for the client side stuff that you'll need to do. So from here, we need to create a couple routes. We're gonna create a checkout route and this is going to be where we send the user to checkouts show. And this is gonna create the Stripe checkout session. We need to create that server side with our private key and it's gonna give us a secret that we can then use in our JavaScript to redirect to that Stripe checkout page. Now, Stripe also has a billing portal, which we can set up as well. And this is the um, kind of 
pair of the Stripe Checkout session. So you can subscribe with a Stripe Checkout session, but in the billing portal, you can actually edit your subscription and update your card and cancel your subscription all from that page. And it looks very similar and it's really, really handy. So um, we're gonna be setting that up as well. So while we're here, let's do a uh, route for that. So Pay is automatically gonna find our keys and the credentials, so we don't need to do any setup for those things. Our user model, when we ran that um, command, is going to include the pay billable module on the user, which will give us a bunch of methods that we can use to create our Stripe um, customer and our checkout session and so on. So let's go into controllers and add our checkouts, controller.rb. And we'll say class checkouts controller and here it's from application controller. We'll have our before action to authenticate user because we want to be able to store that as a customer and we'll need the email address um, to do that in Stripe. And so here we can say current user dot processor equals Stripe. That's going to tell pay that our payment processor is Stripe. And then we can say current user.customer to actually create the Stripe customer on the API. And that's going to allow us to create a checkout session from our current user payment processor. This is from the pay billable module that will give us the Stripe payment processor. And we can call checkout on it and we can give it few options. So mode is going to be payment. We're going to make a one-time payment um, in this example and then we're going to have a line item for this. So we'll say line items and we can give this a string for the product that we want the user to purchase. Now if you go into Stripe you can create products. Here I've created a t-shirt and it has a price of $15. So we can paste in this price as our line items and that's going to set up our Stripe checkout session to uh, tell the user they're purchasing that product. So now we can go into app views and we'll add checkouts show.html.erb and inside of there we can have our uh, review page where we have you know this is what you're gonna be buying, um, are you ready to check out? Maybe this is like your shopping cart page and you're gonna render that Stripe checkout session as a button. So this is gonna to link to that and we've got a helper that is built into, um, into pay that will help with that. So we're gonna say pay Stripe checkout button, locals, the session will be the at checkout session that we just created and the title of this will be checkout which will display on the button. So now if we go to our Rails app and we start that up, so let's run our Rails server and once this is up we'll make sure that we are logged in as a user and we can go to that checkout route and I'm logged in already so we'll see the checkout button and this redirects us to Stripe. So we go to checkout.stripe.com. It has our t-shirt and our amount. And we can fill out any information um, here or pay with Google Pay or Apple Pay. So um, I'm going to go fill out the credit card information and then we'll be able to check out. And you'll see it's already pre-populated the email address because we have that attached to our Stripe customer. And it can pre-populate that for us and save the user some trouble. And now that we have that, we can click pay and it's going to actually charge our card and it will succeed and redirect us back to our Rails application once that's finished. So you can customize that return URL so that you can send them to a thank you page or something and it will redirect accordingly there. And you're also in your Stripe, um, your Stripe listen uh, command, you're going to see that there was a payment intent created and a payment intent succeeded. These are events for that checkout session that just happened. The payment intent succeeded is viewable on the web and you can see that this was for that t-shirt for $15 and it shows you the charges that um, were associated with that payment intent. 
So a payment intent is a way for Stripe to keep track of the users trying to check out and it can have multiple payment uh, or multiple charges. They might fail, for example, and it will keep track of all of that together. And this is useful for SCA. So if the bank says, hey, we need to verify that this is the real user um, of the account trying to use that card, then it will have a pop-up that says, you know, confirm this with your bank. And all of that is done um, by Stripe for you and you don't have to build any of that. So the payment intents are kind of a layer or wrapper around your charges. And your charges are the actual payment, intent, uh, payment attempts um, to charge your card. So they're kind of two very similar concepts, but the pay gem is gonna listen to that webhook and actually record the charges that were listed here. So it's gonna be able to store those in the database for you. And we can run Rails console and look at the last pay charge. And here you'll see the last pay charge was um, this ID, 1IDCE. And if we go here, we should see that same ID. So it's actually saved this charge in our database automatically for us. So pay is keeping track of those subscriptions and charges, and that way you can have them in your database so you can render those out and everything that you might like. So let's go back to our Rails app here, and let's check out the billing portal. So first things first, we're gonna want to change this to um, be a subscription. So we'll have mode subscription, and our line items here are going to be a subscription in our Stripe account. So I've got some other products here. We have a test subscription, and we can grab, say, this default one for $10 a month, and we can paste that in as our line item, and that's gonna be what the user will see in the checkout session. So let's go ahead and check out one more time. This will create that button for us, redirect us to Stripe. We're gonna see subscribe to test subscription. I'll fill out this and subscribe, and you'll notice the button says subscribe as well. It knows that it's doing a subscription. And then once this is filled out, we will have a subscription created in our database through the webhook. So here I will subscribe with our credit card information and our user is going to be redirected back to the homepage on success. And our Stripe listen is gonna have a whole bunch of um, items here listed now. So we have a subscription that was created, we have a charge for that that succeeded, invoice changes, payment intents, and so on. There's quite a bit of stuff that happens when you create a subscription in Stripe. So now we should be able to go to our Rails console and look at the pay subscription dot last, and we'll see that there is a subscription for that user. Um, and this we can look up in Stripe. So if we want to say uh, test subscriptions, pass in that ID, oops, type that wrong, um, subscriptions slash that, and that will pull up the subscription that we just created uh, right now. So that keeps track of everything for us automatically using the pay gem. And then our code can say, okay, it looks like you have a subscription. You're good to go. Um, you can access these parts of the app um, that subscribers can. So we didn't have to build hardly any code for that in our Rails application. All of that kind of magically works because the webhooks are handled by the pay gem. Now let's add our billing controller so that the user can actually edit that subscription. So we'll have our billing controller, application controller, before action, authenticate user, and our show is going to create a billing portal um, object here. So for this, we're gonna have a portal session, and this is gonna be current, user dot payment processor dot billing portal. Um, and basically this will create a portal session for us and then store that to a variable and then we'll create a link to that 
just like we did with the Stripe checkout session. So then under app views, we can make a billing show.html.erb, billing show, and here we can say billing, and then link to the billing portal. And this is going to be our portal session.url. So this is a little bit more straightforward. Um, we can just link to that. We don't have to use the Stripe JS to render out the button for Stripe checkout. So that's why we had the partial for the Stripe checkout session, but we can do a simple link for the billing portal. So let's go to slash billing. That will create our billing portal link. We can click on that and it will take us to our session. We can see that we're subscribed to that $10 a month test subscription. It's our card that we added. We can change the card. We can update our billing info. We can add our address or our tax ID and things like that. Um, and all of this is handled right here. We can also see that we are charged $10 for that subscription. So this will actually link us to the invoice so we can download that. Um, we can download the invoice, the receipt, all of that is listed here, which is super duper nice. We don't have to build any of that in our application. The user can click return to pay. That will take you back to the application and you can update your plan here. So if you have other plans available, it will show you monthly, yearly, and you can uh, switch those right here. You can also cancel your subscription if you'd like, and that is going to do exactly what it sounds like. So this is the quickest way to add payments to your Rails application. You don't have to do hardly anything to make this work, and it's just kind of a magical experience to add payments again. Stripe definitely got more complicated with the custom elements and everything because of SCA, which makes sense, but that's why they've introduced Stripe Checkout, and it is really, really great. Um, this is definitely something that uh, if Jumpstart Pro didn't already have all the custom integrations to make it all feel native in your application, I'd probably be using Stripe Checkout for that if I didn't have the custom integration already done in Jumpstart. So that is it for Stripe Checkout. I hope you enjoyed this and you can use this to now start another product and make some money and build some cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.